to the University of Chicago were often nothing more than IQ tests. They're very frustrating. <laughs> you know, you study a subject, then you discover that it didn't matter whether you studied it or not. It was, could you think? Uh, Chicago has been raved, University of Chicago consistently gets rated as the third most unpleasant university in the United States. <laughs> and uh, fourth is Rensselaer Polytech, fifth is Johns Hopkins. Johns Hopkins <laughs> has no football team. You know, it give you the idea of what makes college pleasant. And the two most uh, unpleasant places to uh, be educated are West Point in Annapolis, our military academies. <laughs> Not the Air Force, that's sort of a joke, but uh, the other is, uh, you know, pretty good. So I realized the University of Chicago was officers training school for intellectuals. <laughs> it was out there to make me an officer, a leader. Okay. Not a businessman, a leader, okay? So, uh, so my ambition has always been to lead people. Because I was trained to lead people because, you know, the main reason you want to lead is you don't want someone else to lead. <laughs> you, know, you know they're just incompetent. So you want to do it yourself. So Chicago's aim was to, you know, turn out people who could lead uh, through just uh, knowing something <laughs> and uh, you know staying away from religion uh, stuff which uh, <laughs> gets you into trouble uh, and diverts you so uh, and this you could say well I'm not talking about religion Francis Crick felt the same way <laughs> you know and uh, I think the intensity in which we, you know, were interested in DNA was, if there's no God, what else is there? <laughs> you know, where does life come from? And how is it possible? So Francis actually thought after we found the DNA structure, he, you know, it would be easier for religion to vanish. That was just nonsense. You know, our structure doesn't affect religious people at all. You shouldn't expect it. But uh, so Francis, you know, resigned from his college in Cambridge because they were going to build a chapel. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, and uh, said, and then sent ten guineas, a little more than that, uh, to Winston Churchill for a film, uh, a fund to build a college brothel. <laughs> so the saying that would be more useful to the college, there were no women in those days, than a chapel. So uh, most people in Cambridge really didn't like Francis as uh, making fun of religion. But, uh, you know, it's hard to take it seriously. Anyways, I'm just saying that the, the fact is we wanted to find something to replace religion. Okay. So that was uh, part of the intensity, uh, both Crick and I. Um, so, uh, so, then in... Uh, you know, why did uh, he go, I mean, you know, our desire to replace religion isn't the reason we found the structure of DNA. And I gave in um, my first couple of lectures here, you know, five reasons uh, uh, why we succeeded. The first was that when you're young and you want to, you know, do something, uh, do something early. That is, go into a field before it's popular. Uh, if you go into a popular field, it will already be populated. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you won't make any difference. So we went into uh, the structure of DNA when there was only uh, two other groups in the world interested in that. So we went into it very early. 
And, uh, but if you go into something for someone else, you must uh, sort of have a way of, you know, getting victory. And I think if you're young, that sort of good rule is uh, only give yourself three years to succeed. Yeah. You know, about the length of a fellowship. <laughs> Don't expect that you can go five years and accomplish nothing. You know, uh, so uh, we thought uh, with DNA, Linus Pauling had just found the alpha helix by being a good chemist and uh, uh, forming the right hydrogen bonds by which the polypeptide chain would fold up. So we thought, well, maybe we could get the structure of DNA tomorrow if we had a good chemical idea, uh, some chemical insight. Uh, so we might get the answer tomorrow. So we weren't sort of thinking of a program where, you know, it was going to take us five years to get there. We thought we might get there tomorrow, which made it much more fun. You know, you wake up every day thinking, well, maybe. And then one day we did it in a day. You know, it took just took two hours. Once we had the idea, and the idea was just base pair adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine. It was so simple. Now I was put it off. I did know about Chargaff's data, which said A is like T and G is like C. But I met Erwin Chargaff, and he was so unpleasant. I didn't want to use his data. <laughs> but eventually I did. You know, I, I said, well, you know, editing isn't exactly equal. But, you know, the measurements were no good anyway. So even if they were equal, they wouldn't have looked equal. You know, they would have been a little deviation. Anyways, the. Uh, so uh, the structure was found. Then the other reason, which was key, is if you really are doing something with, you know, into a sort of uh, a frontier, it's best to always have someone work with someone. Don't try and do it by yourself. Because you've got to talk to someone. And uh, if you're ahead of your time, so there's no one to talk to. Okay. So I arrived in Cambridge, and if Crick hadn't been there, I wouldn't have, you know. Crick was thinking about proteins uh, in a sort of negative way. He, his main contribution was to prove that the way people were trying to solve the structure of proteins wasn't going to work. So he wasn't very popular particularly was the, the professor at Lawrence Bay, because Crick said it's not going to work. Anyways, Francis, uh, you know, knew that the experiment was, said the gene is DNA. And uh, he can, you know, he knew exactly how the polypeptide, how the alpha helix was found. And uh, so, and he understood x-ray diagrams. The other thing which is why we succeeded is we talk to our competitors. Now that's a tricky thing to do because uh, you both want to win. And uh, science is a little different than business. In business you want to kill them. But in science you don't know how to kill your competitors because they're the only one you can talk to. <laughs> you know, otherwise, it's only your competitors who can appreciate what you're doing. So, in that sense, science is civilized. This question is, you know, how you can do it. And uh, I would have never seen the B form of picture if I hadn't, you know, just gone to London and I went to London thinking I'm just going to show them Linus Pauling's manuscript, in which supposedly the world's greatest chemist proposes a chemically absolutely implausible structure, an impossible structure. And uh, so I took it down and I tried to show it to Rosalind Franklin and she said DNA isn't a helix, I don't have to read the paper. Uh -huh. And I said, but DNA is a helix. So 